Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about social security payments. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to watch the video in its entirety so you don't miss any details that could pertain to you and your specific situation. So here we are back again at ssa.gov and we're looking at the schedule of social security benefit payments for 2023. Uh, they normally put this out towards the end of every year for the upcoming year so that you can plan accordingly for your finances and your bills, your expenses on those things. Uh, we'll be going over the chart today. Uh, we'll, we're gonna reference this legend here at the bottom and we're gonna go in chronological order here depending on the type of benefit you receive and when you would get paid. Um, we don't normally cover SSI benefits on this channel. It's mainly social security benefits, um, but for the purpose of the video, we're gonna go over it now. So we'll start off with SSI payments. Uh, SSI is paid on the first of every month and the only exception to this is if the first falls on a weekend or a holiday. So if we actually look at our calendar here um, for this past December and January. Um, so if you were eligible for SSI payments in December and January, um, the way that it would have worked out for you, and a lot of people tend to scratch their head on this or get confused and maybe they think they miss a payment for January. Um, so if you look here, uh, December 1st falls on a Thursday. So if you were eligible for an SSI payment in December uh, of 22, you would have gotten paid on that Thursday. Then if you look here, January 1st falls on a Sunday. So January 1st is a holiday, and then on top of that, this past um, January also fell on the weekend. Um, the 31st of December was also on the weekend as well, so this, mean that, this means that if you were eligible for uh, an SSI payment in January of 2023, you actually got paid on December 30th of 2022. So you would have gotten, again, if you were eligible for both months, you would have gotten paid twice in December. This is actually not uncommon and not the first time that I've seen this. It just kind of depends on how everything lines up for the, on the, on the calendar, um, you know, and, and, and where the, where the week falls. Uh, moving on with the chart. So uh, if, if you, in the bottom part of this legend, if you're somebody that has been receiving social security benefits on or before May of 1997, you would have gotten your payment on the third of the month. Okay, so you can see the uh, the solid box around the date here represents the third of the month, but again, it's, it's a specific date. The third of the month, um, the only time you might have been paid different is if the third fell on a weekend or a, uh, or a holiday. All right. Um, now for anybody who has recently filed or has filing upcoming in the future where they're going to claim Social Security benefits. Um, so after May of 97, if you're filing, it depends on when your birthday is in the month, um, determines when you get paid. So if you're born between the 1st and the 10th, you get paid on the second Wednesday of the month. If you're born between the 11th and the 20th, you get paid on the third Wednesday of the month. And if you're born between the 21st and the 31st, you get paid on the fourth Wednesday of the month. This will not change. Um, again, it's based off your birthday. Uh, this is essentially how Social Security floats their payments. Um, uh, I believe at one point you could request to have it change, but they've done away with that. So you're, you're stuck on your pay date. <clears throat> Now, uh, I want to go over a particular policy to kind of segue into our examples that we're gonna have here. So for social security benefits, you have uh, two, two types of categories. You have life cases and you have death cases. Both are almost self-explanatory, but life cases would be retirement benefits, uh, disability benefit, well, in this case, disability wouldn't apply, but um, retirement benefits, maybe spouse benefits, divorce spouse benefits, benefits for children, things like that. Um, and for those purposes, you have something called throughout the month rule. And, and, and what this means is you must meet all of the criteria to be eligible for a benefit for an entire calendar month in order to be paid. So this is essentially why Social Security pays a month behind is because they don't prorate anything. So, you know, whether you are eligible for a, a week, uh, a few weeks, a day, 
it's for them it's all or nothing so you either meet all of the criteria for the entire month or you, or you don't and if you don't then you're not due a payment if you do then you are so in the case of um, again retirement spouse benefits things like that um, that's the rule this rule does not exist with survivors benefits so essentially um, whatever month that you're eligible for um, you would be able to file a claim and and take it if you meet all there's other details that are involved um, like relationship are you working things like that um, that i might have covered in another video or will in the future uh, but just keep that in mind that for any sort of survivor's benefits, uh, this rule does not apply. It's only in life cases. So with that, um, we'll head over to our example here. Okay. So a common question that I've seen online is, uh, when, when will my first payment come? Or when, maybe a better way to put it, is when am I due my first payment? Okay. Because um, that answer can be different depending on how you pose that question. So we already covered through the throughout the month rule that's in life cases only and it does not apply with survivor's benefits. Okay, so in our first example, so Social Security, whenever um, you're considering what, what your first month of eligibility is, Social Security looks at your birthday and the day before your birthday, okay? So in this case, if you're born on the first or the second of the month, um, you have a, a slight advantage over somebody who was born on the third through the end of the month. And the fact that you're going to meet their criteria for the entire calendar month in that same month that the event happens as far as your age goes. So in our first example, if you're born on February 1st of 1961, that means that you would be turning 62 in the current month which, and year, which we're in February of 23. Um, so if you're born on uh, February 1st of 1961, your earliest month of entitlement to retirement benefits, as an example, is going to be February of 2023. Because for the entire calendar month, from the 1st to the 28th, you will have been 62. So your earliest... Um, your earliest month of entitlement would be February 23. Again, Social Security is still going to pay a month behind, so your first payment would be due in March. And in this specific example, or the, this calendar year, it would be March 8th, because that would be the second Wednesday of the month. All right, so we come here, we look at March. The first Wednesday is actually the first, and the second Wednesday would be the 8th. So you would get paid on March 8th, if this was your situation. Now, in example two, if you're born on February 2nd of 1961, Social Security is going to view this as if you were born on the 1st, because again, they're looking at the day before. That means that your earliest month of entitlement is still going to be February. Social Security pays a month behind, so your first payment would still be in March, and again, same pay date, right? Because you're in that, you're born between the 1st and the 10th, so you're still going to be on the second Wednesday of the month, um, so you would get paid March 8th. Now, coming down to the third example, if you're born on either the third or the rest of the month, your earliest month of entitlement would be March of 2023 because that is the first calendar month that you are 62 for the entire month, right? Because you would not have been 62 for the first or the second. And that, that throughout the month rule would apply then. Um, and March would be your earliest month of entitlement. This means that your first payment would not be until April of 23. And then what week you get paid would vary depending on when in this time period you, you were born, right? So if you're born, again, between the 1st and the 10th, that's the second Wednesday. The 11th through the 20th is the third Wednesday. And the 21st through the 31st is, would be the fourth Wednesday. Um, and to be specific about that, sometimes people will say, oh, I get paid the third week of the month. No, right? Because again, if we're looking at March, let's say that you're let's say that you're born on um, you know the way that it might I can't recall off the top of my head. I'm on the I'm on the spot, but right. So the first Wednesday, um, or I should say, the first of the month in March happens to be on a Wednesday, right? So that means there's you know one, two, three, four, five weeks in March realistically. Not five full weeks, but there's still five weeks in March. 
Um, so you don't want to get into the habit of saying, oh, I get paid on the second week or the third week. No, you get paid on the second Wednesday or the third Wednesday, right? So in March, there's five Wednesdays, but there's only four of them that really apply for Social Security benefits. All right, so going um, again, so for example, three, if you're born on the third or throughout any time throughout the, uh, the rest of the month, you're going to back up your earliest month of eligibility is going to be the following month. And then uh, you get paid after that and so on and so forth. Okay, and this comes into play too with um, a lot of people have the question of how early can I file? The earliest that Social Security can take an application for benefits would be four months before your earliest month of entitlement, right? So if we're looking at our first two examples here, um, that would be, what is it, uh, 1, 12, 11, 10, right? So if you're example 1 or 2, that means that October of 2022 would be the earliest that you could file and have an application process for benefits, if you were example number three, November could be the er, would would be the earliest that Social Security could process your application. If it's any so, if you were example three and you con, and you had an appointment in October of 2022 to file for benefits, they would actually not be able to take your application, or I should say, process your application. They might be able to take it, but let's say that you're at the beginning of October, right? Let's say that your appointment. Let's say that this is you. Your date of birth is February 3rd of 1961, and you have an appointment with Social Security on October 1st, as an example. Um, they probably are not going to take your application because they can only hold on to a claim for 30 days. Realistically, is what most offices will tell you, is that we're only going to hold the claim for 30 days before we can make a decision. If you're example three, that means that uh, March is your earliest month of entitlement. If your appointment's in October, you're too far out for me to even process your claim. So I'm probably going to reschedule your appointment for sometime in November, whatever the earliest point in November is. Um, if let's say that you're still example three, but maybe your appointment is like the last week of October. Now I'm going to just hold your claim until the first week of November. At that point, I'm going to process it and everything will realistically go through. Um, there could be some sort of system delay that will happen, but realistically at that point, everything can be adjudicated or completed and you're good to go. So just know that when you're creating your plan or you're wanting to make your appointment, um, you, the, the claim cannot be processed if your earliest month of entitlement is greater than four months. Right. Now going into the example of death cases. So remember for death cases, the throughout the month rule does not apply. So if your date of birth is February 1st of 1963, that means that you turned 60 in February of 2023. And if you wanted to apply for a widow or widower's benefits, this would be your earliest month of entitlement. If you're born on uh, example two, if you're born on February 3rd of 63 or any time later in the month, your earliest month of entitlement to widow or widower's benefits would still be February of 2023. And then your earliest, uh, your first payment would be the following month in March. And you would get paid based on the deceased person's birthday, right? Because that's the record that's in question. Even though that you're the applicant, your payment cycle is based off of whoever that primary person is. In the exception, though, of spouse benefits, if you're eligible for, let's say, retirement and spouse benefits uh, retirement benefits being under your own record, and then you are eligible for an additional benefit under your spouse because they have a higher insurance amount, um, you're going to get paid based off of your birthday in that situation. So every you're going to get, your, uh, I can't remember if it's one deposit or two, I believe it comes as one, um, under your own birthday. If you were, a, uh, if it was an example of, let's say that you are only eligible for spouse benefits. So if you had um, some people might refer to it as a more traditional marriage where one person, you know, went to work and the other person was a homemaker and raised children and things like that. And you have no work history and you're not, or maybe very little, and you're not eligible for social security benefits under your own record. Your pay date will be based off of your spouse's birthday at that point. All right. Uh, rolling into, um, disability cases. 
I see this a lot as well. I was approved for disability. When do I expect to be paid or when is my first payment? Now, with the exception of back pay, right? So this means that maybe you were denied at first or, or let's say that your claim took a significant amount of time to get approved um, and you're going to be due back pay. Um, to, this is more so to help understand when your payments would be effective, I guess is probably the best way to put it, and when your first payment would have been due. I can tell you, as of today in 2023, on average, a disability claim um, is probably going to take between like 12 and 18 months for an initial determination of, of if you're eligible or not. So there'll be back pay involved, and this may not apply to you, um, with the exception of maybe if you were... If you were like a, 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 if you were terminally ill, it's probably the easiest example. So if you have like, um, you know, like stage four cancer or something like that, and, and you only have, you know, so many months left or, or projected, um, there's a there's a, a coding that will be added to your claim for a quick determination, right? So you'll yours your you go right to the top of the list um, for all of your medical records and things like that to get uh, reviewed. The fastest that I've ever seen a case like that get approved was actually the same day, within hours of me transferring the claim um, to the Disability Determination Service. I guess they were able to get a hold of the doctor the same day, or they sent everything that was needed. Um, they got the answer back. And before I, I, that was my first claim of the day, which was probably about nine in the morning. And then before I left around three thirty, four o'clock, I already got the approval back and was able to complete the claim. So it was super awesome. Um, that was probably the most efficient government work I've ever seen, um, and 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 uh, you know it, it's it, 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 that's how I wish all cases were, but that's not always the case. So anyway, uh, for disability cases in this first example, uh, the throughout the month rule will apply in regards to your five month waiting period. So anybody that's approved for disability, regardless of when, um, there's something called the five month waiting period. Uh, and th for the first five full calendar months that you're found to be disabled, no disability benefits can be paid. I don't fully understand why this is a law um, or, there's, or why there's no exceptions to this. Even in those terminally ill cases, there is still the five-month waiting period. Um, it's just the way that the law was written, unfortunately. And the only thing I can say is if you disagree with it, write your, write your uh, representatives and uh, let them know how you feel about that. And see if there's a, a way to uh, change it. So if as an example, example one, you're found to be disabled with January 1st of 2023. That means that your five month waiting period would be January through May. Your earliest month of entitlement is going to be June and social security benefits are paid a month behind. So your first deposit is going to be in July and your pay, your pay week again is based off your birthday. Um, there are some cases where you would still get paid on the third of the month, and that's usually whenever you draw Social Security Disability Insurance, which is SSDI, and SSI, which is Supplemental Security Income, at the same time. So if you that's called a, a, a concurrent claim. So when you receive both of those benefits at the same time is when you get paid. Your SSI would come on the first, and then your disability check would come on the third. Um, Cases where you receive both of those benefits at the same time usually means that your disability amount is 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 uh, pretty low. Um, the maximum SSI check that you can receive in 2023, I think, is $914. So this would mean, let's say, that your SSDI benefit is like $500. Um, then SSI is going to supplement the rest of that to get you up to around $914. And there's certain exclusions, so you might actually even draw a little more than $914, but that's realistically... Um, what it would look like. Then, uh, okay, so going down to example two, right? So our first example, you're found to be disabled on the first of the month. Example two, you are found to be disabled uh, on the second or any point later in that month. Now your five-month wait waiting period has changed, right? So if you were found to be disabled on January 2nd or any time later, your five-month waiting period now becomes February through June, your month of entitlement is backed up one more month to July, and your first payment is going to be in August. And then same situation, depending on you know if you're receiving SSI or not, and if they can pay you on the third, they will. And uh, if it's just straight SSDI benefits, then realistically you're going to be paid based off the day in the month in which you were born. 
So I certainly hope that this video was able to help you. This is probably one of the most frequent questions I see is when am I going to get paid, essentially. Um, if you enjoyed the video, you learned something new, you got something out of it, please give it a like. Uh, it does help out the algorithm of the channel and spread the video out to other people who are looking for the same information like you that might be confused and are needing help or some, a little bit of clarity. If you had a question about anything that I mentioned in the video, please leave a comment down below and I will reply as soon as I can. And uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on your bell notifications so that you're always notified whenever I'm posting new videos. Thank you so much for watching and uh, stay tuned for more. Have a good day. Thank you.